everybody. I'm Stacy, And I'm her daughter, Mickey. And, and welcome to Kitty Nomics! <laughs> There's our horn! Yay! <laughs> that is another Fun-Filled Fridays of Kids Financial Literacy with Kitty Nomics. Are you guys as excited as we are? Like, we're uber excited today because we have like a seriously special guest, seriously special. So wait till I read out our bio. But today we're going to be talking all about conscious spending for kids. I was like, I'm not even sure if I want Mickey to be at this webinar. Because <laughs> because our, our guest is going to play, going to going to do something that that maybe the adults may not like, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyways. Welcome to Kittynomics. I would like to welcome all the new kitties that have joined us this week. We had a whole bunch of signups. So we'd like to welcome you to our little Kittynomics community. And of course, welcome back to all of the returning kitties that are on Kittynomics week after week. We love you for being here. Thank you for coming on this journey for financial literacy for you guys. We are super excited to have you. So. Let's start out by sharing my screen. Trying to share my screen. What's happening? There we go. There we go. All right. So, Kittynomics, what is it? What are we about? So, Kittynomics will help kids ages eight plus to develop a healthy relationship towards financial literacy, helping to start kids off on the right path to have a successful financial future. That's what we want for you. That's what we want for you. That's what they want for your parents and me. So that's what we want. That's what we're here for. So we're always going to learn a new financial literacy skill every week, each week. And we are super excited for every one of our guests that comes on Kittynomics. But let's just start off with some housekeeping items. First housekeeping item, just to let you know that we cannot see or hear any of the kitties on Kittynomics, right? So if you'd like to chat to us and communicate, all the questions and answers must be done through the chat box down up above or down below or to the side. I'm not sure where your chat box is. Mine's is up above. But um, please, all questions and answers will be done in the chat box. Also, we like to keep a very safe community here at Kittynomics. So please remember, remember that webinar that we had that was about online money smarts, right? With yeah. That was a year ago. <laughs> that was a year ago. But it's on our Kittynomics YouTube channel. <laughs> Gotta love kids. Um, and it was all about, you know, maintaining your privacy, right? So remember, in the chat box, I never want to see anybody's personal information, yeah. not where you live, yeah. no phone numbers, none of that, right? We are here to keep it as a very safe, safe community, okay? Always remember that each Kittynomics webinar is recorded. So this one is being recorded, right? Yep, and it will be posted by 8 p.m. tonight on our Kittynomics YouTube channel. So you can catch this webinar at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, all of our, of our past webinars are on our Kittynomics YouTube channel. So you can watch back any of the past webinars, including the one that I just mentioned about online money smarts, right? So I know you kitties are already active in the chat box. There's like 30 messages. I know you guys are all saying hello and welcoming everybody uh, to Kitty Nomics. All the new kids there are, we're very nice. So, you know, say hi. You know what? Let's do a roll call before I introduce our special guests. I want to know, I'm going to double check, roll call. Who? Where are, which country are you watching us from today? So let me know, which country are you guys watching us from? Canada, Canada. America. Let me see, Jenna says Canada. God's will says Canada. Canada, Canada. Let me see, Canada, Alicia, Thomas. Thomas says somewhere on the planet. That's awesome. <laughs> Janiya says Canada, 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 US. Yay, US, hey. that's awesome. Oh, Joshua says space today. That's awesome. Um, let me see. Is there anybody else outside of Canada today who's joining us? Put it in the chat. We'd love to shout you out. All right. <laughs> Do I get a certificate after the course? No, you don't, Rithi, but thank you for joining us today. Micah's from England. Awesome. 
We have the USA. All right. Okay. So let's introduce our special guest today. Today we have on Mr. Bruce Celery. Yay! I am like super excited because he was like a step away from like Oprah, who I love. Yeah. <laughs> so the fact that he was in the airspace of Oprah, I am like. I am in awe. <laughs> so let's read out what, what is Mr. Bruce? And Mr. Bruce Celery is a personal finance journalist, author, and speaker. He has written two Globe and Mail best-selling boot, uh, boots, <laughs> books, including Moo La La, <laughs> Why Smart People Do Dumb Things with Money and What You Can Do About It. He's also the money columnist for CBC Radio and the North American syndicated show City Line. He also hosts a weekly radio show on personal finance for personal finance for Sirius XM. Bruce hosted the exchange on the CBC television Million Dollar Neighborhood on the Oprah Winfrey Network. <laughs> spent a decade as an anchor for BNN Bloomberg in Toronto and New York City. Bruce is the past president of the Canadian Club of, of Toronto and an alumni of the Governor General's Leadership Conference, a member of the advisory board for the Smith School of Business at Queen's University, and most importantly, a former PGA brand. Oh my gosh, Bruce, I cut you off. I'm sorry. But the most important part I saw, I talked about was Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> Oprah. Like Oprah. Well, we'd like to give a big kitty nomics welcome to Mr. Bruce. Welcome, Mr. Bruce. Thank I'm you, gonna... Stacey and Mickey. Thank you for having me. Yay. Yay. The kids say woohoo. Blake says welcome. Woohoo. <laughs> now, I, um, you know, Stacey and Mickey, I normally present to grown-ups, and I think uh, I was a little nervous about the event that I was going to do, so I made sure that I brought a little furry friend, so if I feel like I need any support during the event, I've got Pandy here to be like my really good friend. Well, we talk about money! We Yay! Talk about money. Okay, great. I love that you have given me sharing screen. I'm going to share my screen right now, and Stacy, I got to say, you pronounced the name of my book and my business beautifully. <laughs> I just love it. When people screw it up and they're like, Mula, ma, ma, ma. no, it's Mula La. Mula La. It's Mula La with an M. And the reason I call all the stuff that I do Mula La is because I think we got to have fun with this stuff. Like, we need to have fun. It's just too definition y and too boring if we're not having fun. So, we need to have fun. And in my job, I, I actually do get to have a lot of fun. I get to wear funny hats. I get to um, judge doggy fashion shows. So this is a doggy fashion show. I got to hold a very cute little goat on City Line because we were talking about giving to charity. And I totally got slimed. I have done all sorts of crazy things. It was the best. So I um, have a very, very good time. And I love talking about money. I also love talking to kids because this is a super cute photo of my my daughter at age three, she's now a lot older than that, but it's like one of the cutest photos ever in the history of the world. So I had to show that she's holding her little marsh pillows, her marsh pillows. Today, we are going to talk about something I call conscious spending, which seems like kind of a big phrase, but it's very, very simple. If you think about being conscious, it's to be aware of your environment. Oh, I made a typo there. To be awareness of your environment. Thank you. Clearly, I need my teacher's apple to be <laughs> revoked, revoked if I've got a spelling error in my PowerPoint slide. To be conscious is to be aware of your environment. And if you think about eating, right, there are things that we eat consciously. The one for me is birthday cake. So a year and a half ago, two years ago, I made a taco cake. Now, Mickey, Look at that cake. Is that not the best cake you've ever seen? So it is chocolate and it's got like nibs for the tomatoes and it's got um, fruit roll up for the cheese. When you receive a birthday cake, it's not like, I mean, you might eat it quickly, but you, you're conscious about it because it's your birthday. You're like, okay, I'm about to take a bite of a taco cake. It's so good. That is an example of conscious eating. 
you had a bowl of popcorn and you're watching a movie, especially a scary movie, you're not conscious. You're like, you're totally unconscious as you hoover the popcorn down. There's conscious listening and there's unconscious listening. So for you gamers out there, when you're in it, when you're in it, you've got the headphones on and you can hear your friends in the, the Fortnite world. You can see everything that's happening. You are focused. Sometimes though, you are not listening consciously because your parents want you to do something or you're like daydreaming in class. So sometimes when it comes to listening, you're not super conscious. So what do you think conscious spending is? When you think about conscious spending, like what does that even mean? I mean, it's really important for us to think about our purchases before we make them, right? Like really important for us to think about a purchase before we make it. Stacy. So let's ask the kitties. What do we think ask the kitties. is? Mickey wants to answer. Okay. Mickey says spending your parents' money. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah. Uh -huh. What do you think? Alicia says that's that that you're not spending all your money at once. Oh, yes, you're not spending it all at once. Yeah. Exactly, yes. Because, you know, there are things like, um, I'm not conscious when I'm sleeping. Mickey, are you conscious when you're sleeping? Are you aware about your environment? No, you're sleeping. Um, I am not conscious sometimes when I'm drawing. I'm not aware of my environment when I'm drawing because I'm like creating this beautiful thing. There are times when I'm very conscious crossing the street. I'm very conscious when I'm crossing the street most of the time. Uh, I remember back in school, I was very conscious when I met a substitute teacher. Cause you're like, you see the substitute teacher and you're like, I wonder what I can get him for. Like, is he in it? Has he got what it takes to be our substitute teacher? So you're pretty conscious about what you're gonna do there. Um, you might be pretty conscious about asking your parents for Minecraft time. Like you're like, okay, how do I get them at just the right moment? So I can just get it like, right. So conscious spending is thinking about a purchase before you make it. And that is super important to do. Money is this great tool. Money is such an amazing tool, um, but we get really weird about it. Grownups mostly, kids less so, but grownups mostly, they have a hard time talking about it. It can make them feel inadequate. Sometimes they do ridiculous things with money. And um, sometimes it can be really, really scary. And that makes it different than most of the other tools that we use in the house. So um, let's see in the chat if you know what a Nutribullet is and you can use a Nutribullet. Just put a Y like for yes in there. Mickey, do you know what a Nutribullet is or like a blender? A blender, yes. A blender, yes. A Nutribullet, no. Nutribullet is just a kind of Micah blender. Micah says yes. Sheila says no. Alicia says yes. Joy says no. Sorry. Right. Rain so says kids, yes. Thomas, yes. Mustafa, yes. Yep. Most of the kids say yes. Most of the kids say yes. What did what do the kids say about PowerPoint? Because oh. I can't believe how good kids are at PowerPoint these days. Geez, or like Google Keynote or whatever, you know, some in Google Classroom, there's a different word for it, but basically a presentation member, a presentation application, PS5, like a gaming console. Uh, so I expect lots of yeses on the gaming console. I don't expect a lot of yeses on the car. Stacy, can you drive a car? <laughs> yes, I can. Not well. Mickey's like, mm, not well, but she yeah. can drive a car. You know, mm -hmm. Yep. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. but with money, we got to learn how to use it as a tool. And often our parents don't teach us. Uh, often we don't Tune in to Kittynomics, so hooray that we're here. Because if you can learn to use money as a tool, the younger you are, the more amazing it is. So when I was a kid, I was in grade eight, so a little bit older than probably most of you. And I bought my brother's lawn maintenance business from him. Now that might be seem like, oh, well, what's the big deal? No, no, I bought that business for 50% of all the revenue I made in the first year. Plus I had to buy all the equipment the lawnmower and the trimmer and the leaf blower and the riding lawnmower, I had to pay for it all. But that gave me a real experience, not only on how to use the tool of a lawnmower, but how to use the tool of money. Cause I suddenly had money. I worked my face off, but in high school, I was able to leave high school early. I finished early and I went to Europe by myself and backpacked around Europe for six months by myself. It was amazing. And that was because I'd mastered earning the, the part of money that's about earning and the part that's about saving. 
right? And spending in a responsible way. So using money as a tool is a really, really great, um, a really great thing. So how do you, and I'd love to hear in the chat some examples, how do you think you could practice conscious spending? thinking before you spend? What are the ways that you could um, do that in your day-to-day -day life? What do you think? What are some ways you could do that? I love Joy's answer. She says budgeting. budgeting. <laughs> Budget. Does she say like a budgeting? Yeah, budgeting. Yes. Eve says collect your receipts. Yes. Uh, Madeline says practice with your school and with your parents. Awesome. Alicia says but by budgeting. Yeah. Um, Blake says like putting less money in your bag. Mm, Micah, Micah, I missed your mic. Compare the different items you want to buy. Ooh, I love that so one. Oh, good. Those are great, great answers. Rain says set a limit. I love your, I love your answer, Rain. That's awesome. Awesome. I know. Sheila says by thinking before you spend. Yes. Think before you spend. So, you know, one of the ways we do it in our family all the time is in the supermarket. So uh, Abby's kind of been coming to the supermarket with me, obviously, since she was a very young baby. But as soon as she could walk around, she would walk around the store and she would see things that she would want and she would bring them back to me. And every single time I would say, how much is that? And when she was a little younger, she'd be like, Ugh, and she'd run back to the cereal aisle or to the candy aisle or to whatever aisle she'd got the thing and she would come back and tell me the price. And the reason that's so important is then we can think about what we buy. And in the supermarket, it's like the greatest school in the world because there's so many ways that you can apply money. So, you know, I will buy honey bunches of oats. I will buy honey bunches of oats, but I will only buy honey bunches of oats when they are on sale. They are on sale for $2.99 at my grocery store, uh, maybe like once a month. So I will buy a bunch of boxes. If you don't get it on sale, do you know how much Honey Bunces votes are? It's like five or six dollars. I'm not paying that amount of money. It's no way. There are other things that I will pay full price for, but not Honey Bunches of Oats. So the supermarket's one way. Another way is talking to your parents about bills. So, you know, just say, hey, like, could I take a look at the electrical bill with you or the hydro bill? Can we talk about the bills? Because, uh, you know, your parents might be willing to talk about it and show you those bills. Allowance is a great way for conscious spending. Oh, my goodness. So Abby has four jars, saving, spending, donating, and investing. And her allowance goes in four equal parts into those jars. She counts it up a lot. And what that allows for her to do is think about like, really, 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 what do I want? Because she's been very good about saving her money in her investing jar. And in her investing jar, how we do it at home is she gets compound interest. So Stacy, I, I bet you've talked about compound interest, but when we do that with allowance, she gets the allowance plus in the beginning, it's like an extra for 25 cents, then it's an extra 50 cents, then it's an extra 75 cents, then it's an extra dollar until she spends it. If she spends the amount in investing, it goes back, the, the compounding goes to zero. Right now, she hasn't spent her investing in so long that it's double the amount. So every week she gets her allowance and the, what she puts in investing, I double it because I want her to, to see the magic that is compound interest. So there's lots of ways you can I like be that one, Mr. Bruce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that too. What's that? The kids say that they like that too. They said cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. And and you know, if you receive allowance, you should go ask your parents if you could have an investing because not everybody has an investing jar. Most people have like just their allowance. If you could have a separate jar where if you don't spend the money, you can start earning compound interest because that is one of the most important life lessons that you can ever, ever learn. I started saving for my retirement. I'm gonna sound like such a total dork here. I started saving for my retirement when I was 16, 16 years old. And the only reason I did was because I had this business, I was earning money and I was so mad that I had to pay tax that the accountant said, well, you don't have to pay the tax, just get an RRSP. And then you don't have to pay as much tax. So I did. And that has served me very, 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 very well. So someone mentioned budgeting. And yes, that is a really, really great way for you to be conscious about your spending. Um, I think you probably covered this before. Let's hear for some kids. What's a budget? What's a budget? Ooh, what's a budget? We've talked what's about budget? this a lot on Kittynomics. If yes. this is the first time, don't worry about it. You can always check back our budgeting webinar that we did with Miss April Mullings. Um, but what's budgeting? Okay, so let's see. Hold on. The kitties are answering. 
Um, I can't remember. Ibia says, an amount of money you plan to spend. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. D forgive me, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Cheryl says, it's spending to a max. Adana says, a limit. Rain says, is a limit of money you spend a day. Rithik, Rithik says, a limit. Joy says, when you plan out what you're going to buy. Yeah. Woo. Oh, my gosh. All those are so good. A oh. budget. Yeah, you got some more? No, uh, no, no, I know. Awesome. Oh, it says a budget is an amount of money you are letting yourself to spend. Yes. But it's like 24 answers. So. Oh my God, I love it. It's how you plan your money. You plan your money. And when you're younger, budgeting is so important because you're just building those skills. When you're older, you might not budget quite so much because you've got some, some more skills. But when you're younger, especially, it's super duper helpful. It helps you manage limited resources. Like you don't have an infinite amount of money. You don't have, um, um, unless you live somewhere else other than where I live, you don't have money falling from the sky, right? So a budget helps you manage those limited resources, which is super, super helpful. And um, and it's a, it's a planning tool, right? So here's, who here has a pet? Okay, tell me in the chat what kind of a pet, what, what kind of a pet you have or what kind of a pet you want. We have a lot of discussions about pets in our house. And Abby is currently interested in having a baby duck a baby duck now i don't think it would really work because we live in a city and we don't have like enough space for a baby duck but um she's also been lobbying for a hedgehog which her cousin had a hedgehog so she knows a bit about hedgehogs she's met cashew he was super cute but what kind of pets stacy what kind of pets do our uh, do our participants want to have so a lot of them want a doggy or a puppy but yeah. i've seen a couple of turtles oh yes i've seen a bunny from madeline Yes. Fish from rain, yes. a hamster from Egypt. Who said the turtle? I've seen that. Oh, Micah says the turtle. turtle. Sharon says she wants a cat. Joshua yes. wants a doggy. Most yes. of them want a doggy or a, uh, or, oh, some, Tula wants a monkey. Oh my goodness. Well, okay. So let's, let's pretend that you really are going to start trying to like lobby for a dog with your parents. So here's an example of what a budget would look like. This kid, Moira, she's got allowance saved $200. When she looks at the expenses that she would have to pay in order to get that pet that she wants, she'd spend almost $70 on the puppy itself, probably a rescue from the Humane Society or something. She wants a Dachshund. She needs to get a bed. A bed's like $42 or so, a collar, a leash, fetch toys, plastic food bowls, treats, a bag of treats. She wants to give her puppy the best dog food, which I think is so amazing. And her budget totals up to just under $200. So, you know, I think if you think about um, that, you could use it in lots of different ways that would have you be conscious about your money. Because when you've got the amount, like Moira knows she needs to save $200, she is less likely to accidentally or unconsciously go spend 50 bucks at the dollar store because she's clear that what she's really focused on is the cute little puppy, the little cute little dashing puppy. So I want in the chat for you to tell me what some things are that you could budget for. What are some things that you could budget for? Like um, a vacation, right? Some of you, now maybe you're, you know, your kids, you're not paying for the whole vacation, but maybe your parents have said, listen, this summer we could have a little vacation and you would need to contribute some money to do an activity. So maybe you'd be like, well, I'd really love to go on a zip line. So that would be my contribution to the family vacation. I'm going to look up online how much a how much a zip line is and save for that amount. So what are some people saying, Stacy, about things they would want to budget for? So Blake says an iPhone. Uh, yes. Rain says a Robux gift card, which Mickey would love. Um, let me see. Oh, a new house says Jenna. I love that, Jenna. That's an amazing answer. Um, let me just see. Um, a lot of them are saying food and clothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Ooh, okay. Like, is it, is it, is it, it Stacy? is it like delicious food or is it like, you know, like, cereal or is it like no beef jerky and peking duck and um, i don't know meat lovers pizza and some delicious things it's friday we should be thinking about delicious food we should it's friday night we should we should indulge right kitties so i guess put in what is your favorite food oh yeah 
a lot of you guys are all saying food. <laughs> I think there are a lot saying food. I don't know, Stacy. What would you say your favorite? Mickey and Stacy, what's your favorite food? Oh, pizza. Yeah. No. I love pizza. Yeah, I love pizza. Oh, you love pizza. Yeah. You love pizza. What do you love, Mickey? I don't know. You don't know. She's so picky. <laughs> She's so picky. Oh He's a picky God. eater. So it's it's a challenge. So, oh, she loves poutines. Poutine? Yeah. Poutine's good. Yeah. Poutine's good. Okay, so here's my next question. So you do the budget and then you realize, wait a second, I actually did blow 50 bucks at the at the dollar store. I've only got $150. I don't have two, $200. I've only got 150. What do you do? What do you do? If you're doing this process of conscious spending and you don't have enough money to buy what it is that you want, what do you do? Oh, Mickey says work. What did the kids work. say? Yeah. Oh, and by yeah. the way, you left off the vet bill on this budget, the kids keep saying. <laughs> They're what? like, where's the vet Smart bill? Kids. Aren't they? <laughs> Smart kids. And some people even get pet insurance. So that's not on here either. Good point. Good point. So if you your budget doesn't balance, you could increase your income so you could work. And what else could you do? Uh, they're all saying wait. Anne says wait. Yes. Um, wait until you save some Madeline money. Says, Madeline says uh, calm yourself and listen to music. Yes, calm yourself and listen to music and like cry yourself to sleep because you don't have the puppy dog yet. That's right. Or maybe uh, something soothing like one of these flippy purses, you know, with the flippy sequins. Oh, Don't yes. You remember these? Yes. My yeah. younger daughter loves those things. Yeah. So LB Child says, wait. They're yeah. all, oh, Egypt says, I guess maybe set a new budget. I think uh -huh. that's what I, um, Egypt is saying. Stacy says, return your items. Yes, return that's your items. Good take one. Some items, take some items out of the shopping basket, right? right? So I look at that and I think, Moira, Best dog food is $21.99. How much is the worst dog food? <laughs> how, how, how cheap can you go here? I'm only <laughs> slightly kidding. I know you love your puppy and you want them to eat delicious food, but if you maybe there's a mid-priced dog food, maybe um, you don't need a bed. Maybe you don't need a bed right in the beginning. Maybe you just make a little bed with some old blankets and maybe a cardboard box and then buy the, buy the puppy a bed for Christmas next year or ask for that for your, own, for your own present. So there's lots of different ways you can be conscious about, um, you can be conscious about making sure that you have the money um, so that you're not going into debt, right? Because I bet debt's another thing that you've talked about a fair amount on here. So we're gonna do this little exercise and um, let's see, see if I can, ooh, okay. We're gonna to go to this really cool website and Mickey, Mickey knows I'm gonna call on her. This website is called Gifting Sense, giftingsense.org and anybody can use it. Mickey and I are gonna do this together but anybody can use it afterwards. We can put the, the, the website in the, in the chat. And I've asked Mickey for an item that she wants. So I'm gonna do the typing, um, but I'm gonna, so you can also do an experience. So an experience would be like, tickets to BTS, tickets to Taylor Swift, tickets to Tones and I, whoever your favorite group is. It also could be an item. Now, kids, this is one way you will be able to convince your parents that the thing that you want is a thing they should help you acquire. Because oh my gosh. <laughs> I know all the kids are like, what? Oh yes, they've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> And if you're if you're a parent listening, you're like, wait a second, who is this guy? Someone turn off the computer. Don't let him, don't, don't let him listen. But I'll tell you, for for both parents and for kids, in this in the spirit of conscious spending, you want to think these things through. Think these things through. And this website is a really really great way to do that. So, um, it is an item. So what kind of item? You can see on the screen here, it could be a toy, it could be electronics, it could be clothes, it could be sports equipment, it could be formal wear. Um, and, you know, look at what I brought in as a prop. Ooh, shoe. I don't know if you're a shoe person, but these ones, oh, they're not mine. They wouldn't fit me, but they oh, were yeah. having holiday shoes last year. Pretty fancy. Like, oh yeah, she has a whole bunch of shoes and clothes. Whole yeah. Bunch of I love fashion, it's okay. Okay, good. Everybody has That's to have some. Great. That's <laughs> great. So, Mickey, would you say that the thing you want is toys, electronics, clothes, sports equipment, formal wear, or something else? 
I would say sports equipment and clothes. And clothes? Yeah. Because you want a pair of shoes, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's call it clothes because I think that might be a better fit. It depends on which category you choose, what sort of questions it asks. And what should, what is this gift? Tell me a bit about this gift. Or not gift, but well, it could be a gift. But tell me about the thing it is that you want. What is it that exactly do you want? She wants a pair of Jordans. Pair of J-O-R-D-A-N's, Jordans. And those are like, like shoes. Yes, they're sneakers. Named after Michael Jordan. Named after Michael Jordan, my favorite Amazing. basketball player. We're yeah. going to skip the photo, but you could put a photo in there. Whoops, sorry. As I say, skip the photo, and then I accidentally <laughs> browse my photos. So we're going <laughs> to click continue. OK. How much does a pair of Jordans cost? Well, these ones were 165. 165. Find the photo. <laughs> okay. All right. How much does shipping for a pair of Jordans cost? Even if you're picking this up in person, you might have to consider the gas or the subway or other transportation costs. Remember that you can often get free shipping by ordering far enough in advance of when you need an item. How much is shipping, do you think? Uh, we didn't check shipping because we were going to go into the store and get them. Okay. So okay. Well, we can put zero. Why don't we put zero? Okay. Because usually what? you can get shipping for free if it's over yeah. the amount. What province are you in, Stacey? Ontario, Canada. Ontario, Canada. Yours to discover and you're going to love it in Ontario. How many times will you use the pair of Air Jordans? Many times a month? or a few times a month? Many. Nikki says many, but we're in a pandemic and we don't go anywhere. Let me get off. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Mickey, here's a hint. Say many times a month. It'll be very <laughs> helpful to your cause. All right, so how many, oh, this is a very good question, Mickey. How many years in a row will you use the Jordans? It, dep it depends on my size fit. And if the shoes became too tight, would you be willing to clip off your big toe? Would you? <laughs> no, I would For sell them. For these Jordans. I would sell them. You oh, would sell them. Okay, we'll come to that in a second. So for the most part, like you're in grade five, kids' shoes from a size standpoint really don't last more than a year. I hate to burst your bubble. They just don't. So I'm gonna say one year, does that make sense? Makes sense yeah. to me. How many months of the year will you use your Jordans? Um, probably like every day, cause school. Every yeah. Would you, the able to wear them? would you wear them in the winter? No. No. So you wouldn't probably wear them in the winter. So what do you think? Seven months of the year, eight months of the year? Mm, about like seven. Seven, okay. And if you're following along at home, you're gonna be able to do this later on your, on your own. Um, how many times a week would you use the, the Jordans during those months? Would you wear them to school every day? Kind of depends. Kind of depends. Should we say should we say four then? Like every other day you'd wear them? Maybe like two days a week or two days a week? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we're continuing. So there's the initial cost, the tax, and the, the shipping doesn't cost anything. So now we're gonna look at the total cost per use. Every time you strap on that pair of shoes, it costs you three dollars. Three dollars. On the right-hand side of the screen, recommended oh, sorry, versus- Sorry, Mr. Bruce, we can't see your screen. I didn't know that you were typing. You're kidding me. You could not see- you... No, we can see your presentation. Oh my goodness, I am mortified. So I am gonna, st I can't, I've been going through this whole thing thinking that you could see my screen and you could not see my screen. I'm so mortified. Okay, so let's see, where is, here it is. I, so, oh, and we have to make a, kind of a correction. The Jordans that she wants, they're 190. And I'll show a picture here if the kids can see it in the camera. Those are the Jordans. Okay. 
Okay. I apologize that I was not sharing the right thing. So here's what the website looks like. I type the name Gift of Jordans. We'll do the photo <laughs> another time. Then the cost is one ninety. Mm -hmm. The shipping we've said zero. The province is Ontario. We're going to use the Jordans many times a month for one year, seven months of the year, two times a week. I know I went through that like the speed of light. So the initial cost is 190. Tax is another 25 bucks, total of 215. And the cost per use is $3.54. So that's really important to know, right? Like say you get, I don't know, $5 a week in your allowance. One way to think about it is, wow, that means that almost my whole allowance every week is going to use this particular shoe. Is that worth it? I don't know. So on the right hand side of the screen, recommended versus anticipated usage. This is just a way to sort of get a sense for it. And it gives you a score. Mickey, your score is average. Your, your recommended usage of 60 is average. It's not terrible. There's worse scores, but it's not amazing, if you know what I mean, okay? So now, um, do you have a sibling or a cousin who could wear this item after you are done with it? Yes. Ooh, okay. So that's good. See the purple on the right-hand side? That's a good thing. Consignment stores buy gently used clothes to sell to other people. Could this item go to a consignment shop? It could. Yes, because she said that she would consider to sell it if her foot got too big. But I mean, how stinky are these shoes gonna be? I mean, really, my shoes are so stinky. Mickey, do you have stinky feet? No, I don't know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm saying, I don't think you're gonna be able to sell these. You may be able to give them to a cousin or a sibling, but I don't think you're gonna be able to sell them a consignment. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. Could you donate it to charity after? Yeah. That I could see after your sibling was done, yeah? Where is this item made? Oh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm going to say it's not made in either Canada or the USA. Yeah, probably other. So what you can see on your screen there is it's less local. So, it, you know, the way this website considers it is if something's more local, it gives you more points. Are you buying this from a local store? Can your parents drive there in under 45 minutes? Yes. Yeah, to the, yeah. To the mall. Yeah. Oh, once, the mall. once it's open. Yeah. <laughs> once the mall's open. Mickey, will you spend some of your own money to help purchase this item? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Do you know and understand the return policy for this item? The answer, I think, is no. no. Okay. Mickey's got this, like. She's like, what return? I'm not trying to return my what? shirt. <laughs> so everybody, the reason why you want to think about that is if something breaks with your item, if you turns out you don't like the item, if the item doesn't fit, you want to know in advance whether or not you're going to be able to return it. That's a really important part of it. The other thing is um, knowing about the warranty on an item. So uh, shoes don't generally have warranty, but let's say it was a PS3 or a Switch or you know an iPhone, there would be a warranty and you'd need to know. Do you, um, do you need to make another purchase to make this item work? I love this question. For example, do you need to buy a new belt if you're buying pants or gloves or a jacket? Mickey, would you need to buy something else to go with your shoes? Yeah. Well, yeah. A tracksuit. Yeah, you need a tracksuit. I love your honesty. Stacy's like, no, you wouldn't. You have a million tracksuits. But no, Mickey's honest, Stacy. That's how she works. I love this conversation, Mr. Bruce. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Mickey, there's this guy who lived in France a long time ago. He was a philosopher. He was very sophisticated. And his name was Diderot. Diderot. So this guy, super smart, he was like, I'm going to get a new house coat. I'm gonna get a new house coat. So he buys a new house coat and he brings it home. He's like, oh my God, I love this house coat so much. And he looks around and he's sitting on his couch and he's like, my couch looks so old next to this beautiful house coat. So you know what he does? He buys a couch. So he's got a beautiful couch, this beautiful house coat. And then he looks around his living room and he's like, but it's so 
dusty and dark here. So he repaints it and gets new drapes, gets new curtains. Awesome. Then he's got this amazing living room. He's got the couch, he's got the carpet, he's got the curtains, he's got the paint, he put in a new light fixture, amazing. But then when he goes from his living room into his bedroom, the bedroom seems really drab. So you know what he did next? What do you think he did next, Mickey? What do you think he did next? She said upgraded his bedroom. Exactly. And then his bedroom was amazing, but his bathroom was a bit of a dump. So he upgraded his bathroom. And you know what happened when all was said and done? Wow. He went bankrupt. <laughs> he went bankrupt. He had no money left. The bank wouldn't lend him any more money. And they call it the Diderot effect. You can look it up online, the Diderot effect, because the house coat made him buy the couch and the curtains and the bedroom and the bathroom, and then he had no money. So it's something to remember if you've got these amazing Jordans and you feel like, oh, my tracksuit won't really cut it. So you buy the new tracksuit, then you're like, God, my scooter is old. It's old. It's just not worthy of these amazing Jordans. And then you want the scooter, et cetera, et cetera. Does this item of clothing tell people what you want them to know about you? What do you think, Mickey? Yeah. Yeah. That's yes, because. She loves basketball. She's a basketball. Player. Basketball. Amazing. Amazing. So the overall rating, 56%. Okay. Not terrible. Okay. It's pretty good. But why I love these questions is it makes you think. It's just asking you, it's having you be conscious, right? So a pair of Jordans is um, $214. This second thing is the DIMS score. Does it make sense? DIMS, does it make sense? Our score, 5.6, and that's made up of all those kinds of questions. Now, 5.6 is not a perfect 10, but it's not a two. So then the great part about the next steps here is you can sign up to get a PDF, like an actual printout of your thinking. You can have it emailed to you and it'll even help you handwrite a letter with some examples. Dear Aunt Margo, I am writing to you today because you very kindly asked mom what I would like for my birthday next month. As you'll see from the attached, I could really use and appreciate new Keds sneakers like the ones Taylor Swift often wears. I'm a size four and would love the red Keds with white polka dots pictured on the next page. Thank you very much for asking mom what I would like. See you through soon, lots of love. Tabitha. So you can't copy that word for word, especially if your name's not Tabitha. But what it is, is a way for you to think a bit about how you build the case to buy the things that you want to buy. So Stacy and Mickey, that's the website called Gifting Sense. I want to see what our listeners want to know about either this way of thinking through purchases or anything else that they want to know about conscious spending. So, um, kitties, do you guys have any questions? I guess we should ask the kitties, do you guys think with Mickey's score and what you just learned, should Mickey get these Jordans yes. in a pandemic? Yes. <laughs> I have one supplementary question while the kids, while they put their answers in there in the chat, <laughs> well, I bet they're going to be in your favor, Mickey. How I mean, they always are. Though. Of course. How much money is going to, how much money are you going to contribute, Mickey? I don't, I don't know. How much do you have it? Well, you don't have to tell me this, but do you have money in your bank account or in your allowance? Uh-huh. Yeah. I just don't know how much I haven't counted. You haven't counted? You... Oh no, you're freezing. Oh no. Is it just us? I hope not. Can everybody see me? Let me just see. No, he froze. Okay. You guys can see me still, right? Okay. No, yes, yes. Okay, so it's just Mr. Bruce that froze, right? Yeah. He froze. Okay. All right. Wait, I swear I just saw him move a little bit. All right. So let's see if Mr. Bruce will unfreeze. Okay. But let's see what all the kids say to buy you these Jordans or not. Mustafa is in your favor and says to buy you these Jordans. <laughs> there we go. I think Mr. Bruce is coming back. There he is. There he is. Um, oh, the magic of computer technology. Isn't it? <laughs>
not sure. What was the what was the answer, Stacy? Did people think she should? I think most of the kids said yes. Look, like they're saying, Mustafa says yes. Oh no, see, I got a few no's. Yeah. Oh, uh, I see. that's a big no. Oh, a good one was uh, after Sheila COVID. says after COVID, yeah, after. which to me makes way more sense. <laughs> yeah. How much of the purchase, Mickey, for you, and just like ask this in your heart. How much of this purchase is for you to feel like, oh my God, I've got these great shoes. And how much of it is for you to be like working it in the playground with your new Jordans, seeing the people that you admire and respect and like sharing in the joy of this thing that you have bought. So is it for you to be swaggy or, yeah, you know, so and basically, drip? Basically people are gonna come up to me and say, hey, you wanna listen to that? I'm gonna like, just flex off my shoes. So she yeah. wants to flex on the on the on the no, playground. I, yes. <laughs> so so you, you know that may, in the spirit of conscious spending, that may say, you know what? Maybe we wait until um, until COVID's done, or we wait until the spring when your feet have probably going to grown, probably will have grown a half size, right by spring. That's. That makes more sense. I think all the kids are saying, yay, flex on the haters. Yeah, flex on Flexing is fun. They're all saying flex. <laughs> flex it, flex it. So that's, um, I just love that um, website because it's a really, it asks some really great questions and it works differently if you, um, if you do an event, like if you want to go to a concert, it asks you about transportation. And I think there is something really helpful as we think about conscious spending to think about experiences. Because I remember things that I did as a kid that really were extraordinary experiences. Like the first time I went and saw a play in a theater. Now, I didn't have to pay for it. Someone else paid for it. But there are things that you really want to do that are experiences that you will remember for the rest of your life. And some of the things that I bought, I don't really remember. Like, you know, I don't, they weren't, they weren't, the thing wasn't nearly as meaningful to me as the experience that I was able to participate in. I agree. Cause I remember buying my first Notorola cell phone and nobody even knows what that is now. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, you're dating yourself, Stacey. You're basically right? 102, 102 years old, aren't you? So, you know, but, you know, back then I really thought that I needed to have it just like she really feels that she needs to have these Jordans during a pandemic. 100%. And I think the other thing to remember is you want what you want. And there's a lot of judgment, like people can get down on you for the things that you want. And sometimes you just want what you want. And you should feel like, you can want what you want. You're going to have to do some work to get what you want. You're going to be thoughtful about when you buy it and how much you pay for it and how you take care of it when you get it. But I think that's a really important thing too, is to dream and to work very, very hard to be able to afford the things that are going to give you the life that you want. And wow, that's such a great lesson, such an important lesson for young people to have, uh, that it's not about just buying stuff for stuff's sake, but yeah, you're going to buy some stuff and it might make you very, very happy. I agree. That's awesome. I really love this site. So we can now go on this site and look at things that that, uh, that she says that she wants and see if, if gifting sense gives us a good score or an average score and figure that out. So let's ask the kids, do you guys have any questions from Mr. Bruce? What do they want to know? And I'll tell you, Stacey, whatever they ask me, I'm just going to look it up in the Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> answer from that. Like, if I don't know the answer, I'm just going to be like, mm, I don't know the answer. But what I can tell you is that most whiskers on uh, uh, are special hairs on a walrus. Uh, that's what I'll answer. That, that, that's a very smart answer for your no answer. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Any questions? Any questions before we wrap up with Mr. Bruce? No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's huge. I know. I don't know what his record is for. No. Oh, he's got the largest gape. He's got the his mouth can stretch. The largest gape he can says he can accommodate a basketball. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, Mr. Bruce, thank you so much. My oh, pleasure. Thank you. We had so much 
fun. No, I told you this was going to be fun and interesting. So now I think all everybody has a new tool, right, to use uh, when they go and talk to their parents about something that they may want, and even a template of an email <laughs> to send out to people, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up by sharing my screen. Hang on, Mr. Bruce, just stay with us. Did, stop share, did I stop sharing mine? Oh, I did. Good, okay. Yes, you did. You did. Thank you. All right. So next question. So this is our last question that we ask on every single Kittynomics webinar. What would happen if kids became more financially literate? And our answer, answer is, is real change that impacts the world. world. Because guess what? When you are financially literate, it will take you to wherever it is that you want to go and be. And whether or not that is the cure for COVID or cancer or our, our climate change, whatever it is, we, you know, financial literacy will impact your life. And the more skills that you have, the better decisions and choices that you'll be able to make as you get older, right? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. All right. So... Next slide. Listen, we always call you our tiny or young financial literacy ambassadors, right? What's an ambassador? An ambassador is somebody that is an authorized messenger or representative. So all you all you kids that join Kittynomics each and every week, you guys are our ambassadors. I want you to go out there and share the information that you've learned because guess what? Knowledge is our superpower, right? And the more that you share it, the stronger that you become and the stronger that the other person becomes too, right? So go out there, share all the tools and skills, share this website, I guess, with your friends, uh, but share Kittynomics and share, and share all of the lessons that you guys learn here on Kittynomics, all right? So coming up, our guest experts coming up for the upcoming weeks. We have Miss Colleen coming up next week, which is the day after my birthday. We'll be doing real estate investing for kids. And then Miss Billy Jane will be back again. And she's gonna be talking about RESPs, which is Registered Education Savings Plans. So that is uh, for, uh, for Canada. However, when you live in other countries, because we always get kids that join us from all over the world, you will have something similar in your country, hopefully, um, which is a savings plan for you for your education, right? So we're going to talk about that on February 12th. Then after that, we have Miss Jane. She's going to be back on Kitty no Kittynomics talking about a, having a positive mindset at work. And what does that mean? Because remember, Miss Jane talks about how to write a resume. Remember, we did that one with uh, Miss Jane. And then we also did how to uh, prep for an interview. That was a fun one, right? And then after that, we also talk, we will talk about on Friday, February 26th, we're going to talk about credit. We'll be back to credit and we're going to talk about good credit. Okay. So that's what we're, that's what's coming up for the month of February. However, we have an uber special guest. They're all uber special. <laughs> but we have Dr. Jill Andrew, who is our one of our politicians here in Toronto, Canada. She's the MPP for uh, a district in Toronto. And so we're going to do a little bit of a different type of style with Dr. Jill Andrew. And so we're going to do more of an interview style. So we just, I just need to know what questions you guys would like me to ask on your, your behalf. So if you guys can send me some questions that you may have about politics, what's going on in our financial markets, how is, how does government play a role in the financial markets? How do they set policies? How do they affect your money? These are great questions, but let me know what questions that you guys will have. And then send me an email to kittynomics101 at gmail.com. So listen, I really, really, really want to hear from you. I think you guys are answering. Let me just check the chat. Sorry. I know every week when I'm wrapping up on the chat, uh, wrapping up on kittynomics, I don't get to the chat. So I do apologize for that. Um, uh, uh, let me see if there's questions. But I know, Cheryl, you also had a question last week about me going live on YouTube. So we don't go live on YouTube, but I do post the videos right after we're done by 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch the video back, okay? Uh -huh. So hopefully you will 
you got that answer, Cheryl. I know you asked it twice last week, so I do apologize. All right. And of course, we always want to hear from you. Please send me any, any questions that you may have, any Maybe you guys have a topic that you want to discuss, let me know so I will find a guest expert for it. And then of course, please like and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Instagram, Instagram Twitter, TikTok. Facebook, and YouTube, and TikTok. Mr. Bruce, we've had TikTok for like almost a year now and we have no video. So Mickey. She is supposed to be she learning is supposed these TikTok to, dances. I know. I need to learn the dance, though. <laughs> I, I, like, Renegade is... I, okay, I'm going to try learning Renegade. So anyways, we will get there. But of course, always use the hashtag Kittynomics or Ask Kittynomics. So thank everybody for joining this week. We will see you next week. Thank you, Mr. Bruce, for joining us this week. You did super awesome. And kids, we'll see you later. Bye! <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs>